Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn about the importance and the usefulness of Azure Cloud along with the Power BI importance. I mean, if any individual who is trying to learn Power BI, if you also know the insights related to cloud and specifically with respect to Azure, how Azure will help us from a data analyst, from a Power BI point of perspective, what are the benefits of learning Azure Cloud? That all points we are going to discuss in this session. Um, the primary agenda for today's session is importance of Azure and the cloud. I mean, Azure, it's a part of, it's a cloud service only, along with the reporting tool, which is our Power BI, the primary stack, which uh, the case are mainly focuses on. So both uh, are part of Microsoft stack only, the Azure Cloud and Power BI. So we are going to discuss the benefits of using Azure along with Power BI. So I've listed down a few important points. So getting started with uh, the very first point. So if you focus on the very first point, both are products of Microsoft. Now this point might look a kind of easier to understand. As we know, Power BI is also a product of Microsoft. Uh, so if you open the, uh, the Power BI itself, and if I go to this file, see where you'll get this about option. See here itself, the naming of the tool itself is trying to give you an idea, Microsoft Power BI Desktop. So it's a purely product of Microsoft. You can download the Power BI Desktop and you can utilize for your reporting purpose. And the same goes with Azure. If you are primarily focusing on Azure, um, this is our Azure portal. So the name itself, you can see here, if I focus on this Azure portal itself, the very first word is Microsoft Azure. So both are product of Microsoft. Now, along with product of Microsoft, there are some other benefits also. So what all that important benefits are? Now, coming down to the second point. So if you focus on the second point, as we know, we are using Power BI for our reporting purpose. Nowadays, it's one of the most highly recommended re reporting tool. But why Azure will play an important role if you know the concepts or insights related to Azure along with Power BI? One of the biggest advantage of understanding the concepts of Azure is Power BI has more connectivity options with respect to Azure services. Now, what is it? Let me go back to the Power BI desktop. Now I'm in the Power BI desktop. See, while if you're in this desktop, if you want to connect to multiple sources, there is an option called as get data. Now in this get data also, if I click on more, see, multiple options are there. You'll get N number of data sources options where you can connect with Microsoft Power BI. Now, why only Azure is recommended as a cloud service with respect to Power BI is, see, if you get towards this left side pane where you have all options, that means all the sources which we can connect. Specifically, as I've said, Azure is also a product of Microsoft. If I click on Azure, we have so many services which are listed here, which are all part of Azure cloud service and which can be connected as a source to Power BI. So you have multiple options starting with Azure SQL, you have Azure Blob Storage, one of the storage accounts, you have Azure Storage Account, you have Azure Database for PostgreSQL. Some of the PostgreSQL concepts which are part of Azure also, that can be also connected. We have an option called as AAS, the Azure Analysis Services. We have an option called as Data Lakes. We have an option called as Data Lake Gen 1 and Gen 2. You, you can see multiple Azure related connectivity modes are there. Now, along with Azure, uh, there is a new introduction by Microsoft, which is nothing but a fabric. Now, even this point also, we would be discussing in our further uh, options, which we have for the benefits, which we have. So you can see, you can directly connect the Microsoft fabric related sources as well here. Now, as we have seen the sources of Azure, let's see how many sources are available with respect to Amazon. Now, Amazon also has their own cloud service, which is AWS. Now, if I specifically mention Amazon, see, you can see there are only three different services which can be connected from specifically, which are related to AWS or Amazon. The Amazon Redshift, Amazon Athena, and Amazon Open Search service, which is a beta service. So we have only three options which we can connect from the Amazon, which we can connect with the AWS. Now, specifically, we are comparing with some other tool, some other cloud also. So let's see what all options we have with respect to Google. 
Google in the sense the GCP cloud service. So if I specifically mention Google, we have Google BigQuery. We have Google BigQuery, one of the important, the beta version also here, the which can be integrated with the Microsoft Entra ID. Google Analytics and Google Sheets. Now, these two are not a part of GCP, but anyways, with respect to GCP, we have only one option, which is the Google BigQuery. So if you want to learn Microsoft Power BI, it is also recommended to learn Azure. Why? One of the benefits we have seen, we have multiple options from Azure as a service, which we can directly connect as a source to Power BI. If we are using AWS, if we are using GCP, we may not have that many options. Either you have to convert it to some other mode and then pull it back to the Power BI. So this is one of the advantage. Now coming down to our understanding, the third point. Now, if you specifically focus on this third point, Azure is cheaper than AWS. See, do not directly jump to the conclusion. This is with respect to data analyst or a BI role only. AWS also come with its own benefit. They have, they're also one of the market leaders. I mean, they are higher than Azure. But if you are specifically looking out for a role which is specific to data analyst or a BI role, that means a Power BI developer role or a Power BI admin role, any kind of Power BI role, you have to compare the both the cloud services. Now, I'm only comparing Azure and AWS with respect to data analyst or BI role. If you compare, the best option is Azure is cheaper. Now, how do you make sure that is cheaper? There are multiple... Um, researches, uh, multiple, uh, I mean, agencies have done some research. So if you specifically visit um, the Google mention Azure versus AWS, if you directly visit this website, see, there are some um, organizations, there are some companies which do analysis. This is with specific to BI or data analyst role. So I'm not directly jumping to the conclusion why Azure is more better than AWS. See, if you're looking out for a role which is specific to DevOps, the AWS DevOps, in that case, Azure is not easily compatible with any DevOps role. AWS is more compatible. AWS is more recommended for that. Uh, more recommended for any DevOps related role. Now with we, with respect to data analyst or BI role, we are checking. If you specifically visit this website, see there are multiple things which are mentioned here. Let's focus here. Let's focus on the primary aspect, which is our pricing. Because pricing plays an important role. If we are using a cloud service, any cloud service is a paid service. Maybe you'll get few free credits for certain set of days, but after that, you have to pay certain amount. Now, if you specifically focus on this amount here, on Azure, on Azure, we are spending around $13.14. I mean, this is with specific to one of the service, which is nothing but the Azure SQL instance. And if that same SQL instance is created in AWS, it would have costed us $198.45 US dollars. So there is a huge gap of 93%. This is with respect to the data analyst again. So that is one of the biggest advantage. If you learn Azure, it is more cost effective with respect to data analyst or a BI role. This is the biggest advantage. Now coming down to the one of the important point again, the fourth point, new fabric introduction and the new fabric stack. Now, what does this fabric stack mean? See, in simple terms, I'll give you the exact idea about Fabric. If you visit the powerbi.com, the Power BI website where we publish our reports, there itself you will find the Microsoft Fabric, all the services. See, Fabric is nothing but a combination of multiple Azure cloud services, which are clubbed together in one single umbrella with respect to data analyst, data engineering, or data science role. Now, anyways, we are focusing on the BI or data analyst role. You can see all these services are very, very useful service. If you know every service which is present in the fabric, that means if you want to learn this fabric, you have to first learn the importance of Microsoft Azure. Now, let's take an example, very basic example of data factory. Data factory is nothing but an ETL tool. 
Now, let me give you with certain example. What does this ADF mean? ADF is nothing but the ETL tool, which will help us to extract the data, which will help us to transform the data. Now, transform in the sense, it will help us to do some logic building on the data which we are getting from multiple sources. So this logic building can be done in the transform stage, and then we can load the data to a specific service, which can be used as a source to a Power BI. So this ETL tool is a part of the ADF is an ETL tool. It's a part of Microsoft Azure. So if you learn this ETL tool, now let's head over to the Microsoft Azure. This is our Microsoft Azure. Uh, the cloud service. So if I specifically mention, there is a service called as data factory. Now this data factory service, uh, we have to create a service here so that we can utilize that service. So if you know the importance of data factory from the Azure cloud, only then it is very easier if you directly jump to the Microsoft fabric and learn this data factory. I mean, if a person is directly coming to the Microsoft fabric, and if he wants to learn data factory, the first ideal thing is always learn data factory from Azure cloud. Because here every service is starting from very basic. How to create a service also, everything is mentioned. If you directly jump to the Microsoft Fabric, Fabric is nothing but a, it's in a closed umbrella where multiple services with respect to data related roles, which are also part of Azure, are clubbed together in one single umbrella. So if you want to learn any specific service which is present here, you have to go back to the Azure, create that service independently, learn that service, make sure you have a good exposure there and only then jump to the Microsoft Fabric. So it is very easier to grasp here. If you directly jump to the Fabric, it is very difficult to learn any of the service might be data activator also might be synapse data engineering might be data science might be synapse data warehouse which is used for storing purpose so all these services are all part of microsoft azure if i come down there are multiple services now what all these services are see the last point which will help us to identify how and what type of services are useful if you learn the service as a bi developer along with azure cloud the services which are part of Azure Cloud, it will definitely help us to grab a good role, a role which is suitable and the company which is, I mean, the current companies which are looking out for specific cloud related tools. Along with BI, along with reporting tool, the companies are looking for a person who also knows the importance of any cloud and the services present in the cloud. Now, primarily for a Power BI developer or for a Power BI any BI related role, if he knows the services like ADF, now this service is a part of Azure. If he knows the services like storage account, storage account is nothing but where we store certain set of information. If he knows the services related to Databricks, Databricks is nothing but where we use a big amount of data, break that data and process that data simultaneously. And if you know the services like SQL Server, SQL Server is nothing but it's a database. If you want to learn SQL Server, you have to have an Azure account. You have to create an Azure account. From there, you have to create your SQL Server. From there, you have to create your multiple databases. So all the services. Now, at the end, there is a service called a Synapse. Synapse is a combination of all the services clubbed together. Synapse has ADF in it. Synapse has Databricks notebook in it. Synapse has storage account in it. And Synapse also has SQL Server in it. So if you learn every service independently from Azure Cloud, even Synapse is a part of Azure Cloud, while creating Synapse, all the services which we have independently created separately can be created in one single workspace. Synapse is a closed workspace where all the services are automatically created and you can utilize the services all together in Synapse. Now, all the services are also part of new Fabric stack. These are all services which are present in Azure, which are very useful services from Power BI point of perspective. If you know the services, it is very easy. You can directly jump to Microsoft Fabric and you can see there is a Synapse Data Engineering, there is a Synapse Data Science, and there is a Synapse Data Warehouse. So these three services are purely dependent on Synapse, purely dependent on Databricks. If you know the importance of that services, which you can learn from Azure, I mean, you can create Azure Databricks here. 
you can create data factories in azure so all these services are part of azure these services you have to learn independently only then i would recommend or people would recommend to directly jump to fabric if you directly come to fabric none of the services are easier to grasp so it is always recommended to know the importance of every service independently from microsoft azure and then jump to this fabric so this services this five different services are all part of azure so if you know this service you can learn any fabric stack you can directly grasp the fabric stack also if you know these services independently in azure and the important aspect is if you want to create a fabric environment fabric it's an environment if you have a power bi license that is not only enough to get fabric fabric is available for 60 days as a free trial after that 60 days are done you have to always go to this microsoft azure account there you will get an option called as microsoft fabric now you can search fabric here you will get an service microsoft fabric fabric is also a service which is part of microsoft azure even though microsoft fabric is independently available from the powerbi.com but after 60 days you want to continue the usage of microsoft fabric you have to come down to this azure click on this microsoft fabric i mean you have to create a fabric capacity fabric capacity is where you have to decide what is the capacity which you would be using so here you have an option you can see you can select any of this capacities starting from f2 now currently the latest update is f2048 so the estimated cost is also mentioned fabric is a bit a costlier service but anyways if you want to continue fabric for a longer duration you have to come down to the azure so every service which you would be learning in fabric are all part of microsoft azure cloud service so that is the importance of learning cloud along with if you compare these services if you learn this service you can utilize that service in fabric fabric can be created in azure now we have seen few more importance also if you want to compare azure with the aws how cheaper is it with respect to the data analyst or bi role and the connectivity modes if you are a power bi developer we have around 20 to 25 options from azure you can connect to power bi as a source not any other cloud service is available in that microsoft power bi tool so these are the biggest benefits if you learn as you are along with power bi definitely you can grab or grasp a new job along with the latest updates which you are working because every company will look an individual who also knows a cloud who also has a good exposure to microsoft stack specifically microsoft azure if you want to enter the field as power bi developer